Welcome to the Center Mid Philosopher. This episode is brought to you by Augustus Royale Fashion. Life's not black and white, it's gray, and gray is beautiful. Check out the brand below in the link. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this week we've got a very special guest with us, um, Jonathan Campbell, uh, Greensboro legend, UNC Chapel Hill legend, MLS legend, MLS champion. Um, and we're going to just talk about some uh, current events in the world of soccer and hear a little bit more about uh, your your background and what you're doing now and how soccer has impacted your life and, and career and views on life. Um, so, Jonathan, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys a little bit about soccer. It's uh been more of a pastime now late, <laughs> lately for me well it has for all of us right unfortunately it it, it ends at some point for everybody and you know <laughs> you and rob lovejoy and logan and grant and all these guys uh, you know from our neck of the woods wells we just had on will hesmer um made it bigger and better than i ever did so congratulations to everything you achieved um but again, just, you know, if we're at the water cooler right now talking soccer, I'd probably ask you, what do you think of the Burhalter rehire? You know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being most excited you could possibly be about a U.S. men's soccer hire, where would you say you, you are on your excitement for him? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Actually, I caught up with uh, Matt a little bit uh, before this call and just telling him, I was like, hey, I just want to let you guys know, you know, I, I don't actually follow soccer that much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, uh, you know, quite a few years of being out of it, but also just even while in it still didn't, didn't, you know, follow it too much. Um, even prior to getting more serious into playing. So there's probably some people out there that haven't played and have a uh, much stronger opinion than I do on it. Um, but I think like, you know, one perspective, obviously happy for a, a UNC uh, person to retain that job um you know his coaching style um you know seeing him coach a little bit with columbus and he's a very tactical coach um and then you know lastly i think for me you know it's hard but maybe just some consistency could also be really good for the team mm -hmm. um i'm not sure from an outsider's perspective if it's like you know, if we need new coaches or what, just kind of the quality of the product on the field. And I know it stems from the coach. Um, but I think from a consistency standpoint, um, you know, it's a good thing. Um, but past that, you know, I don't have a, a wild opinion on it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't either, interestingly. I mean, it's, I think it's, I give it a solid B. It, it, but it, yeah. I say that. I'm I I was super excited for when Burhalter was hired the first go round. I um I thought we performed really well in the World Cup, but it, it has I've been reading and listening to lots of podcasts and just lots of different opinions on it, and um it just begets a lot of questions. One of which is, you know, going into the 2026 World Cup, um. What would be your expectations or hopes that how where do you think we ought to get to to for you to go? Yeah. All right. That we're starting to make some success here. Again, the answer could be as far as possible. But no, I mean, what's sort of the bare minimum for you? Uh, I mean, I, I think like, you know, what round of 16 almost, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think just getting past the initial stage, the group stage. Um, I think is a really important element um, for a lot of this. So um, it's tough. I mean, I think the draw can matter a lot, but I think just getting through the initial stage, I think right now is, is kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I'm with you. I think going into 2026, especially it being here, to me, it's quarters. Like, I think it's yeah. winning the next. And that, that that's my – if we don't do that, then I don't think it has been You're a success. Disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Yeah. Because yeah. we've got to start making strides. Like it can't just be group stage. And I think, given this last World Cup, I was okay with it. And that was a really tough break drawing Holland. I mean, you know, there were a lot. Yeah. Of, you know, um, 
but uh, I think we got to get to quarterfinals. And then from there, we're starting to go, you know, it's hard for, because like I was thinking about it, just the sheer math of it and in, in this complexity of, of <laughs> soccer, there's 25, 30 so, teams in the world that won't expect to be in the semis, you know, and that's just yeah. a mathematical impossibility. And it's not like the, it's not like March Madness where it happens every year and it's like, ah, whatever. It's a lot of momentum built up to that every four years and it's just not going to happen for everybody. But given that it's here, given that we've got, you know, we could debate whether this is the golden generation or whether it was Donovan Beasley, John O'Brien, which I actually sort of think it was those guys. However, we're really, really good right now, as good as we may, you know, have ever been. I think we got to look beyond group stage as the bare minimum. But, you know, I, I, I'm with you. And it's, your answer is a good one because we're all kind of right in that tweener stage. And um, so, um, yeah. The Messi going to enter Miami, um, I mean, again, a, someone like, such as yourself that's hard charging right out of Dar Darden Business School at UVA, which congratulations by, on that, by Thank the way. You. And, uh, you know, really leading it in the world of finance, you don't have a lot of time for much of anything. But how much, like, you know, if – will Messi get you to tune in a lot more often? I mean, will you go, no, I'm going to try to catch some games now? I mean – how excited are you on Messi joining? I feel like, I mean, still, you know, the fact is you could have watched Messi beforehand, right? right? So, like, for me, you know, maybe it's live games. I think that could be a big difference. And my brother immediately texts me. He's like, okay, what are the chances I can get tickets, you know, through one of your friends for the, you know, Charlotte-Miami game? Mm -hmm. I think it was probably in Charlotte kind of near the end of the season. And you see the effect where it was, I mean, the stats are like, oh, $45 a ticket. Now, like, the minimum is, you know, 450 mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I don't know if that came back down a little bit from there. But <clears throat> I think, you know, for me, if I were choosing to watch games, which, like, I don't watch that often, but, but like, I think this is just kind of a, a – nature of what was on when I was younger but I would just immediately tune in and if there was a game it was probably Manchester United mm -hmm. I did that a couple of times growing up and so I just became oh, like I kind of followed Manchester United yeah me too. not much past that mm -hmm. you know not not you know too many reasons beyond that uh, they were great back in the day so quality of play was also uh, you know a, a big element but like that wasn't why I chose it necessarily mm -hmm. um so I don't think it like to me it's not going to change whether I'm tuning into the games. Um, I think it will be interesting to see, you know, him matching up against ML play, you know, MLS players just on the field. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I'm hoping that it also brings the in-person element. Um, and I know a lot of viewership changes, you know, with eyeballs, and, and that can drive a lot of the media revenue. But I think in-person could be a huge factor, um, you know, and you hope it drives brand loyalty. So I'm I'm actually, you know, it's it's interesting. I haven't looked in, into it too much, but I, I um, work in our tech and media group. And in that we look at uh, sports teams. So we, you know, try to help sell or advise um, very big teams. And, you know, we're on some of you know, the biggest with soccer, but also uh, NFL and some other leagues and so you know first thing I'm looking at is like okay like what type of contract does he have and it's just it's really interesting to see where he kind of leaned in on um, and I think he's getting a cut of broadcasting mm -hmm. rights you know I'm sure he got an equity part in mm -hmm. uh, Miami I, you know when the Beckham happened he got a, you know, rights to a future team so just kind of seeing how he also, I think, is aligning to the future of MLS is actually a really interesting take. That's a great point. And I've, again, I've been, we, we, as you and I discussed briefly, I just, we just did an episode about private equity investment in um, sports, but obviously more specifically global soccer teams all over the world and what they're looking for how what levers they're looking to pull where do they see a lot of value and you know a lot of them are in these you know the streaming has completely upended the you know television world of you know soccer and you know um was listening to um boy did apple win and i'm that's a win-win-win for everyone because i remember reading 
before the messy thing was like, have there been rumblings that Apple has an out clause with MLS if they don't get a certain amount of subscriptions and that kind of thing. And people were starting to be like, oh my God, because, and again, so I'm going, where I'm going with this back to yeah. you is, um, you touched on the broadcasting and the games and, yeah. a, and a piece of that. Um, it that was a massive win to kind of solidify that partnership because it, you know these again these investors and the leagues they and teams make so uh, it sounds like a large 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 portion of their profits from you know subscri uh, television rights and so to fortify that relationship with Apple I think is massive and you touched on it um, that Messi kind of tapped into that what were I mean it was that the most interesting component of the deal he structured or were there other pieces that you're like that's interesting and in telling about the future of the league I'm trying to think if I saw anything else with it but you know I think there was broadcasting rights with Miami that he kind of tapped into um, I don't know if there was like league wide stuff. Um, the one I would be interested is if, and you know, you you might actually know, but if he got future rights to a, a team um, to develop one elsewhere. I don't know if he did that or if he is like fully aligning with Miami. I don't know if he did either. There's still pieces of the deal that are kind of coming out. Like we're really in yeah. the middle of all of this still, but um, I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah, I know, I know. I mean, and. And this is where it's like, okay, if you have a future team, you know, that diversifies where you, you know, you're not attaching with Beckham anymore. But, you know, you look at it and you're like, okay, what is it saying? You know, how long does he play beyond this? Two, you know, four or five years? Mm -hmm. um, but then long term, it's like, okay, you know, uh, I don't think, I think you saw Ronaldo kind of struggle with it, but he went to, you know, Saudi Arabia, right? And I think he, you know, returned from there and, you know, maybe it wasn't the best situation for him and living situation. Mm -hmm. And so you see someone messy, I'm sure had an equal offer, you know? Oh yeah. 1.6 so billion actually. Yeah. And so you look at, okay, that's what he turned down. Right. And like, why, mm -hmm. you know, and you look at like, okay, like on a salary basis, there's no chance we gave him that much, no. you know? So it's all these other things that, you have to think on some level he sees comparative mm -hmm. you know it, it's not it's probably never going to be 1.6 billion mm -hmm. but he's at least thinking i can actually get somewhere close or the quality of life that i'm living but also like this future attachment that i'm going to make an investment mm -hmm. is very long term mm -hmm. so i think that actually really speaks volumes um, and kind of like, okay, well, now he can recruit players, bring more players in, like, ha you know, having backup Messi in there, like, you know, what type of quality can they bring in and who can they convince to, to come over? Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And I appreciate your, your great fresh out of Darden uh, mind on that. No, I <laughs> yeah. mean, really, though, it's, it is, yeah. that's what this kind of stuff that we're interested in. And it's the business components of it is almost as fascinating as anything else. Um, and like, yeah, you, I appreciate you raising the fact that like, Hey, if, you know, it may not be messy himself, but the quadrillion guys he's got and gals, he's got in his corner advising him, they saw something and yeah. what is it that he saw and you know, what that, how that m might be a indicator of growth and where is that growth and for the league. And so that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. well, I want to take it back to you a little bit more in your background and just for the listeners and viewers that aren't as familiar with you and your, your pedigree and accomplishments, um, just kind of maybe could you just kind of give us the, hey, uh, this is how I got going. This is the clubs I played for, went from there, and the teams you played for in the MLS, and, um, you know, we'll take it from there. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm, I'm sure the names have kind of, you know, evolved um, but starting with Greensboro Soccer Club, um, they maybe it was my ninth or tenth grade. Me too. They they started academy, mm -hmm. and it was kind of at that point like I wasn't sold on soccer yet, and the academy was in its first year, and so it was a really difficult time because I think people were traveling, you know, so much for it, and it just wasn't built out yet. So I was convinced to kind of try, you know give that a try and play academy 
through a coach that I had, Darren Powell, and uh, um, he was you know, one of coaches too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he was great. And mm-hmm. like he saw a lot of potential in me that I didn't really see at the time. Um, and so from there, played academy, and now it's North Carolina Fusion Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of my junior year really shot up, um, and you know probably grow, grew into my body, um, but also just started practicing more, way way more than I had previously. Got some you know youth national team call ups, um, then was recruited to go to UNC, and kind of decided between UNC and UVA were kind of the two programs that it came down to. Mm-hmm. So I had visited UVA and, you know, went back for Darden. But um, from there, played four years at UNC and was drafted uh, to Chicago Fire, played there for three years, um, and then switched over to Seattle for my last year, mm-hmm. um, which was a lot of fun. Finished it. I mean, it wasn't playing as much, but we uh, won the championship there, which was awesome and a great kind of in the, into the career um, I was trialing with some other teams at that point and COVID hit. So I saw that as the time to kind of pivot mm-hmm. and, uh, go to an NBA program. That's awesome. Um, so you got to play at Chicago for a bit. Did you ever over- overlap with Logan there? He might not have been playing there, but was he coaching some at all? Yeah, he was coaching. Yeah. Um, so I did overlap with him and just having someone that like, you know, uh, has kind of been in your shoes that you could really trust was great, you know, as sage advice and um, someone I could always bounce things off of. Yeah, yeah. So we played club together, and um, I played for Elmar and with him, and um, I had we had him on a couple weeks ago, and it was awesome. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, I mean, I'm just a blip on the radar for him. Of you know, I'm hardly memorable, but I mean, he, you know, <laughs> he was definitely one of the best I ever played with for sure. Um, great guy. No, great guy. Really major leader in that locker room. Um, well, and so, you know, like, as you, you know, you're kind of fresh off of, I mean, you weren't that long ago that you were playing professionally. And, you know, one of the themes of this show and is that um, how soccer has played a role influencing you people in their careers and their relationships and their you know family and you know how they approach life and um i'm curious you know how has soccer influenced you and is now that you're kind of embarking on this really big business career and you know what are some uh, things that you've taken from um, your playing career that's helped you uh where you are now yeah I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, and Darden will really try to teach you on how to pitch these things, but there's a lot of qualities that just like sports in general um, teach you along the way. And you maybe don't realize it, but um, a lot of it is, you know, more generic things where it's like, okay, like hard, you know, hard work, work ethic. Um, There's some other things where it's like, you know, in today's world, I think being able to handle, um, you know, in the moment, harsh critique on your work and really be able to perform in the moment mm-hmm. is a very, you know, difficult, um, you know, element and characteristic that a lot of people kind of fail to have, um, I think these days. And, you know, uh, if your boss come, kind of, you know, comes down on you, some people kind of crumble at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's actually a big element in sports that will help people transition into, you know, a more regular career. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the other thing is just what my like normal is for practice and work ethic and, you know, the work that I put into things is just, it becomes different than, you know, some other people, but you become, you know, very normalized to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a tough transition, but you know, working with Bank of America and then also, you know, even at Darden now continuing it, we've, uh, I started up a wine company mm-hmm. with, uh, one of my friends and you know, best friends from, um, Greensboro. And so nice. that's, you know, now been going for a year and it's been going great. Um, that's you awesome. know, and I think it's been a lot of fun. It's, uh, called Theo Leo. And that's been like, you know, something is on there, which try to have, you know, a whole outdoors element of mm-hmm. giving back to the wildlife and like, you know, one thing I think that soccer, you know, 
helped solidify is just being outdoors, trying to stay healthy, you know, being active and like trying to always ground yourself in that and come back to it. Um, even working these intense jobs is uh, a good, you know, reminder. Awesome. No, that's great. Um, and, um, you know, w w I'm curious when you guys were doing, when you were playing, did you guys ever get to play um, international teams? Like, you know, we talked to Eddie and Logan and some of these guys about some wild times playing against teams from Mexico or Central America and that kind of thing. Did you have a chance to do any of that when you were in the MLS? I was trying to think. I mean, the last one that I remember was in Seattle. We did play Borussia Dortmund, oh, wow. um, which was, uh, you know, a great one. I hadn't been playing that much at the time. Um, and, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on um, who was marking me, but I uh, scored a header. Nice. It wasn't like a tall defender, but yeah. <laughs> scored a header. And that was just, a, you know, a great moment. I'm sure they probably weren't even trying out there, but... Um, that's that pretty, was a, a big highlight. <laughs> that's a pretty killer one. Yeah, scoring a header against Borussia Dortmund, uh, I would I would take that all day. Um, <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, well, hey, man, I, I, if it's cool with you, let's jump to the uh, rapid fire questions. The fun. Okay. Cool with you. Um, yeah, I don't know how rapid I'll be, but <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, nah, these are they're, they're, It's pretty binary. I mean, you can't. It's one or the other. So it's kind of um, so Messi or Ronaldo. I think I like watching Messi more. Nice. Um, in this, my I've got a little age on you, but uh, Messi or Maradona? <laughs> uh, Maradona's warm up. Uh, Messi, Messi on the field. There you go. I love it. Love it. Uh, Ronaldo or Ronaldo? So Cristiano versus El Phenomeno. El Phenomeno. Nice. Interesting. It, just interestingly, I would have thought for I would have thought Cristiano would just slam that one. And it's actually been, I think, like the four or five last guests we've had have said Il Phenomeno, interestingly. Um, I don't know if it's like age or, you know, but I just growing up was like watching him World Cup time. So yeah. it's like, it's yeah. just, you know, it's killer instinct. Yeah, I mean, him and his peak was pretty unmatched. Uh, but then, you know, it just he didn't, he had a great career. But I mean, he, you know, he didn't, hadn't played nearly as long as some of these guys playing now. And But he when he was at his best, he was unreal. Um, yeah, I don't know what they do to keep uh, keep the shape of their body these days. I mean, oh, it's man. incredible. Like, I think Ronaldo can just keep playing forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, like, you know, I only played for my in my youth, but, like, you know, injuries. I mean, the fact that these guys aren't constantly hurt is just a miracle in itself, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, so how about uh, Donovan or Dempsey? Um, I feel like Donovan. Yeah, right on. But yeah, Dempsey definitely had an edge to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, who is uh, your favorite player of all time? Um, as a center back, I'll go with uh, growing up watching Vidic. Nice, good one, very good one. He was great. Yeah. Um, that's a, <laughs> a beast. One. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, you know, sticking with the theme of the show, um, favorite center mid of all time. Um, probably, I would go with Iniesta. Nice, that's a good one. Yeah, very good one. Um, and who's the best player you ever played with or against? Um, I mean, with, I would go with Basti, um, having him come over and just like he was, you know, he, he was not in his prime, but seeing his vision on the field was just incredible. He's light years ahead where he'd be like, oh, Jonathan, you passed it to me, you know, who's wide open. I was like, this is great, right? Like, I'm giving it Basti. There's no way he can complain. Mm hmm you know, and then it's like, Jonathan, like, you should have seen that, like, three players beyond on the left side. We had a 2v1 overload. Like, you needed to switch it to the left side. And you're like, right, yeah, I should have seen that. Like, <laughs> Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> no so, shit. So he, um, he would uh, – you guys would – that's incredible. That I mean, so he, how is he – I mean, how is he as a teammate? Was he a pretty cool guy? Or, I mean, it sounds like he, he's German, so, you know, they, they critique, I guess. Yeah. 
I, I mean, he doesn't show it as much, but like, you know how Thomas Mueller is like a complete jokester? Yeah. Bassie's the same way. Like, locker room pranks. Like, he just tries to just joke around the entire time. And like, it's very funny because like when he switches into that element, he's like a kid. Wow. But then like on the field, it's like a complete 180. Oh, yeah. You know, he's... but so he was. It's actually really, really interesting and like that dynamic of bringing in these players that are, you know, big time um, legends. Um, it, it, I think it can be make or break, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I know some teams have struggled with that with who they bring in. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he was great in the locker room. So it was it was phenomenal. Um, and then trying to just like learn these little things from him um, was was crazy. But I guess. The other one I was going to say is playing against, like, huge admiration for Davidia. Um, oh, yeah. You know, so, uh, again, some people, I think, looked at it like, I'm going to come over and collect my paycheck for two years um, and not probably ever do a workout. Um, this guy, like, I just remember, you know, we were almost like 20 yards up in their half. He's diving out of bounds, saving a header. And I'm like, okay, good. Like now, like, you know, can probably jog back, like it's switching the field. I mean, he's on a dead sprint going up the field and I'm having to just like chase after him. Mm-hmm. We're like, this guy cares. Yeah. You know? Like, I think they were probably beating us three, one, you know, at like half and just at halftime, he's just like ripping into some players on like how they need to do this, this, this. And like, I mean, he did not settle for like subpar. So um playing against he was he was a a great person to play against yeah i have a lot of admiration for him because he did not come over here and just kick it i mean he he actually had some really good playing left in him and he did come over and play hard and yeah and i mean that's great and you i mean just you know these anecdotes that someone like yourself can provide is just such a cool window into (laughs) you know the inside world of you know on the field and in the locker room so i appreciate that um yeah of course um so my favorite perfect 11 who you got combining any era time or you know who who would you field yeah um i guess we'll we'll stick with some of the people that i had mentioned sure um but i think i don't know if my 11 will will, uh, come out to a, a great team um, but right. individual, pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, Keeper will go with uh, Buffon. Sure. Um, I mean, he's been all-time legend. Um, we'll go with Maldini, left back, and um, Vidic and Puyol nice. um, as center backs. So I think that pairing would be good. I remember seeing Ferdinand and Vidic when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and just a great duo back there. But... Um, we'll swap Puyol in. Um, right back, Danny Alves. Um, so we'll get him up the field. And then I've always, I don't know how you feel with that. I've always liked when wingers kind of cut in mm-hmm. on their dominant foot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we'll go, yeah, we'll yeah. go with uh, Messi at right mid and Ronaldo at uh, uh, left mid. I love it. Yeah, love it. And then, um, We'll go again, Manchester United, Paul Scholes. Sure. Um, midfield. Um, probably put Zidane in there. Mm-hmm. That was a big uh, World Cup mm-hmm. um, watching them. And then we'll, we'll stick with Iniesta, um, kind of attacking mid. Mm-hmm. And then maybe that's just my time in watching people. We'll go with uh, Lewandowski as striker. Nice. Love it. That's so. Great. I think I fielded 11. Yeah, that's a, that's a killer <laughs> lineup, man. That's awesome. Um, and then last question, what's your favorite jersey of all time? Oh, man. I'm trying to think. I might just go with, like, Italy's classic. Sure. Um, and I feel like, you know... Their blue is always great. Having their prime manager in just a navy suit. Oh yeah. Um, aside, I mean, it's just all time. And now people are in t-shirts, but yeah, <laughs> pretty legendary uh, yeah. situation there. Oh yeah, you can never. They they somehow 
make reinvent the blue every time somehow and even it's the same thing but it's like still cool every yeah. time and it's you know you just can't beat it that's a great one I I don't think I'm re I'm never really a fan of the alternative colors or like when teams you know just yeah. change right you know it's like if Manchester United starts rocking some random blue mm -hmm. and you're like eh, like yeah don't know if I really buy it yeah you I know? hear you I hear you well um <laughs> that was awesome um well um thank you so much and you yeah. know, you sold yourself short you had some incredible insight to share and uh, really <laughs> cool stories like I, you know Bastian Schweinsteiger that's a topper um that's pretty killer <laughs> um so thank you so much man and um I really I'm honor and a pleasure and thank you for coming on oh you big time and uh you know um Maybe I'll cash in some favors and see if you can get all all Basti to come on. I'm kidding. I'm that'll never happen. <laughs> but uh, thank you and that'd uh, be pretty good. Yeah, tell your friends and uh, good to have another G, G bro legend on. Um, and I'm not a Greensboro legend, but you are. Um, <laughs> and uh, thanks so much. And I'll let you get back to uh, doing your M and A with uh, sports teams globally. <laughs> It's what we're trying to do, you know, right. but I appreciate it. Thanks right. for having me on. All right, bud. Thank you so much. with you all. All right, man. Thank you. Take care. Take care.